Lotus's gorgeous little Elise first sprang onto the market a couple of years ago, something like that, since which it has exploded with success for the company. They only anticipated building 750 a year. They're already building about 3,000 of these gorgeous little critters every single year. It's a measure of the, the scale of that success for Lotus that the building I'm standing in front of today is a technical centre. It's enormous, as yet empty, but very soon very full. Lotus are doing very nicely indeed, thank you very much. And so we come to the newly revised Elise. Well, the changes to the exterior are minimal, but it's a kind of minimalistic car, that's what you'd expect, so subtle things. The headlamps are fared in, it's quite a complicated thing to make this. The indicators are now a smoked finish, and if you wander to the back, the Enerax will notice that uh, in future the new Elise has a little black strip here. That's because it's some boring, tedious, probably European legal thing. It's to do with the fact that it has a new rear wheel that's slightly wider and a new specially designed rear tyre. Then at the rear we've got a little wing here, which I'm told does work very well, and that's a good job because there is more power. In the middle here, nestling away, it's got the engine it was always supposed to have, everybody said, the VVC. That means more power, and that power is put to the rear wheels through a new close ratio gearbox. All of which means I'm sick of talking to you, and I want to drive it, because that's what it's all about, once you've got in. <laughs> Next time anybody you're talking to who owns one of these things starts bragging about its capabilities, believe them. Believe everything. They might be the biggest pub bore you've ever met, but everything they say is true. It really does corner like nothing else you'll ever drive. It stops. The stopping power is unbelievable. And it really is all about communicative controls. And that sounds you really, but it is. Everything about the car talks to you. The steering is as direct as it could possibly be without being heavy. The brakes are precisely the same, they're non-servo. And the more you apply the pressure, it sounds obvious, the more it'll brake for you. But until you've really felt a proper braking system like this, you don't know what it's like. It's an absolutely astounding car to drive. this new model, we've had a quick look at the changes. Why these changes? What are you trying to do to it? We're trying to open the market up. We've had a, a, a lot of our present customers saying, I just like a bit more power. So um, we've increased the power, we've changed the gear ratio, so uh, they're a, a more sporty, if you can believe that, a more sporty type uh, uh, gear ratios, which is very, very well suited to the engine uh, characteristics and we've made subtle other changes throughout the car uh, and made a new model. Having said that, we've been tootling around the track <laughs> at some speed with your driving and I've had a little blast on the roads myself. I mean, we are talking about a pretty serious tool for racing, but you can use it on the roads and it isn't frightening. You don't sit in this thing and think, it's a monster, and it's going to hurt me. No, we have, a, we have a little phrase which says, uh, fun at 50. And that's no reference to my age. It's just, <laughs> it's a reference to the fact that it's it it can be just fun driving at 50 miles an hour in a in a queue of traffic. But when you get the chance to explore the the vehicle even on the road or or preferably on a on a on a closed circuit, then the car really does come alive, and you really have this 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 fantastic feeling of you being as one with the car. Do you feel that this as a car is the truest? to Lotus's roots, to what Lotus is about. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I often say to people that uh, if Colin Chapman was alive today, I'm, I'm sure he'd love this car. As a company, then, this is going to be a significant factor, presumably, in the future for Lotus, the fact that you are now producing a car that sells in significant volume by any count. It sort of puts a stake in the ground of where we at Lotus are and where we will be going, the direction we'll be going in the future. So what's next? Wait and see. For me, the beauty of the Elise, which you've got out, is in the detail. It is a tiny, lightweight sports car, obviously. It's not even that powerful when you look at it on paper. But of course, put in such a lightweight frame, it translates to an awful lot of power and an awful lot of fun. And it is those details around the car that make it just a delight. For instance, in here, and this would just make my life better, this door hinge, if you can see it, is an absolute delight. The amount of engineering and work that goes into making something like that means that every time I've opened the door in my day with this car, I've just smiled and felt happy. And that is just, for me, what the car's about. 
happiness. It looks quite happy, it drives, it just makes you smile. I congratulate Lotus on building something that is more Lotus than anything else could possibly be. They really have epitomised everything Lotus in this car. The developments are definitely worthwhile. Subtle though they may be, they do make a big difference to the little car. And I wish them all the very best. We congratulate them on the fact that they're selling so many of them, outstripping even their expectations, and I'm sure they will do so in the future. At what? Under 30,000, well under 30,000 pounds. What can you buy for more fun?